So you need a plugged motor with no ejection charge for your model rocket. But they don't make too many of them. So what are you going to do? That's what I'm going to cover in this video. Welcome to Advanced Construction Videos, where we show you how to tackle rocketry building techniques and more. On our website, we sell kits, motors, building supplies, and electronics. So come and learn, shop, build, and fly when you visit us at ApogeeRockets.com. Hi, I'm Tim Van Milligan from Apogee Components. We get the request all the time about how do you make a plugged motor. Now a plugged motor is a motor that doesn't have an ejection charge. So the first question I always ask is what are you doing with a model rocket motor that you don't need the ejection charge? It's very rare that you will ever fly a rocket that you don't need an ejection charge. Now I can only think of maybe one place that you'd need it and that's on a rocket that you want to make into a cluster. Like here's a Saturn 1B and if you look in the bottom of it we have a single motor. But for instance say you wanted to put other motors around it. So there's eight tubes and theoretically and I've done this you could actually put eight motors in here. Um, and, but the outer ones you might want plugged because there's no place for the ejection charge to go. So you have a scale model with a lot of motors like a Saturn 1B and you need plugged motors. Now typically what I tell people to do rather than plugging the motor is to just vent the ejection charge. Um, so what do you mean by venting? And here's a good example. This is a glider where the ejection charge comes out the side of the rocket and so it comes out of a vent. Um, you can see you get this nice cool pattern of uh, residue on the outside and it kind of kind of looks really cool so I, I like it just for that effect alone. Um, but the question people always ask us is how big do you make the vent? Well that's easy to answer. Well you make it the same diameter as the end of the rocket motor because if it's coming out there it's going to go out to the outside of the rocket. Similarly Okay, so that's what I normally tell people to do, but there are situations like this Saturn 1B where you have clusters where you might want to plug the motor. So in this case, it depends on the motor that you're using and how you're going to plug it. Um, if you're using a black powder motor like from Estes, um, you want to start with a motor that is a booster motor. So the booster motor doesn't have an ejection charge on top. Um, and you're just looking inside and you can see the black powder. So the easy way to plug these is to just pour epoxy into it. Now I like a 30 minute epoxy, a good hard epoxy, and I want to do it the night before the launch, not on the field, because the epoxy can still stay a little bit soft and it really has to hold against the side of the casing. Now if you look at the inside of the casing, sometimes there's some black residue on there. So you want to take like a brush, like a toothbrush or something, and try to scrape as much of, off of that as possible. And then when you fill it up, higher than that black uh, line around the perimeter, um, like this one right here. So this one I've filled up um, with epoxy. I don't know, it's really hard to see because the epoxy's clear. It just has a little bit of a shine on it but uh, this one is plugged. You don't want to use a motor like this one here that has a clay cap on it because underneath that clay cap is an ejection charge. And if you try to plug it, what's going to happen is when that ejection charge goes off, it is so powerful, that plug is going to come out of there like a bullet and it's going to destroy your rocket. Now, how do I know this? Well, because I've destroyed rockets. Um, so here is a rocket. Uh, this is a North Coast Rocketry Cluster Duck. Um, and I tried to use regular motors, not the booster motors, and plug them. And what happened was when the ejection charge came off, it just blew these engine tubes apart. There was just so much force. And basically, I've ruined this rocket. I'd have to replace all those tubes on the outside where the ejection charge went off. So don't use regular motors, use booster motors. Okay, so now say you have a composite motor from Aerotech. Um, so it will look like this, and if you look in the top, it has a little plastic cap 
that's on the inside that holds in the ejection charge. So on these motors, you have to remove the ejection charge. Now getting that little cap out is kind of tricky. Um, you want to take a thin, small screwdriver like this, like a, a flat bladed screwdriver, and get into the side of it and, and just pull it back and then get a tweezers in there and you got to catch that lip. Let's see if I can do it here. And then you just got to gently wiggle it back and forth as you pull it out like this. All right. And you can see it's just a plastic cap and then the ejection charge is on the inside and I have this little container and then just take the ejection charge and just pour it out. Okay. And tap it out pretty good. And inside of it, um, I don't think I got it all because I can. Typically, you'll be able to see the top of the the delay inside. Okay, so but once you get it all out, um, then fill this up with epoxy. And again, just like the other one, clean it out first with a with a rag or something. Um, and then, so you have a nice good bond, then pour your epoxy in and do it the night before. Okay, so that's how you would do a single use motor. Now, if you have a reloadable motor, like this one right here, so here's all the guts that go inside the motor, but the important part is here. This is the forward closure, and it would be screwed on like that. Um, normally, what happens is you just take the ejection charge, and it comes into these little caps like this. I'm trying to do it without spilling it all. Um, that little, there's black powder in there. And I, again, I would dump this into the canister. Save this because you could, you can always use ejection charges when you get into dual deployment. Um, so now it doesn't have an ejection charge in the motor, but you still would get a little bit of flame coming out of that hole on the forward end of the motor. So what I do is you take a little bit of wadding or dog barf. This is the household insulation. We call it dog barf in rocketry. Um, I would put that in there like that and then take the little red cap and stick it on the end. Now this might blow off um, at when the delay is done burning. This is the delay right here. Um, when the delay is done burning, you're going to get a little bit of residue. Hopefully that wadding will catch most of it. Um, there might be a little puff of pressure to blow the cap off, but it's not going to be a big burst like you normally get with an ejection charge. So that would, is how you do a reloadable motor. If you got a Cesaroni motor, on the top of their motors is a paper cap and then what you do is you would peel that cap off, dump out the black powder and again take some wadding, stick it on top, put some tape over the top of it to hold it all in. Again you're just trying to catch that little puff, that last little puff from the delay charge as it's burning. It's going to go forward but it's not going to be a lot. If you want to protect the inside of your rocket, um, a solid bulkhead in front of that would be just fine, like a, like a paper disc or something like that. There's just not a lot of pressure there. So that is how you plug a motor. We, again, we don't advise doing plug motors. I'd rather you vent it out the outside because we don't want to be playing with loose black powder because that's uh, typically um, something that only adults would do. And if you're under 18, don't do it at all. Okay, so my name is Tim Van Milligan. You're watching the Apogee Rocketry Workshop. May the winds be light, may the skies be blue, and may all your rockets fly straight and true.